Welcome to Diary of a Publisher. Here we don't just talk, we explore, question, and push beyond the ordinary. In this snippet, we dive into a moment that truly matters. And if you're ready to see things from a fresh perspective, you're at the right place. Let's get started. What is the importance of a chip in today's world? So, you know, when we were discussing as to what we would talk about in this episode, I thought let's call this episode The Chip, The Cold Wars and Amrit Kaal. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing a connect between the salience of the chip in international affairs, how it influenced the outcome of Cold War 1.0, which was the Cold War between the United States and then Soviet Union, how it is shaping the current Cold War 2.0 between US and Russia and China, primarily US, China, but Mm -hmm. also US, Russia and China, how it may be central to the destiny of our Amrit Kaal, the chip. So uh, the, this nanotechnological marvel, uh, how it is shaping international relations. And uh, much of my thoughts are driven by this great book of uh, Chris Miller, Chip Wars, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful read. And uh, so the thought emanates from there. And the central point that I'm going to make is that uh, chips and strategic microelectronics have been the high ground for national security and international affairs in the past. And they will continue to shape uh, international affairs in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will converge with other technologies like AI and biotechnology, but um, chip is pretty central to the whole game. That's the topic. And uh, as we proceed, we'll answer various questions that you at us. Mm -hmm. We should start with Cold War because that was, you said chip was already pre-existing then as well. In, during Cold War, one which we say US versus USSR, how was a chip so important then? Yeah, so before I come to that, I mean, it's common knowledge, but just let me reiterate it. So let's see how small is the chip. It, it evokes wonderment. Coronavirus, we just went through the pandemic. The coronavirus, I'm told, was in diameter 100 nanometers. And one nanometer is one billionth of a meter, 10 to the power minus 9. So it's not shorter. The chip is half the size of the coronavirus. The whole game is to pack transistors into these decreasing size. So the game is of miniaturization, miniaturizing computing power. And therein lies the story of the Cold War. So just to give you a sense of miniaturization of computing power, 60 years ago, how many transistors on a chip? Just guess. About 12. Four. Mm -hmm. Four transistors on a chip. Today, how many transistors here on the A14 processor chip? There were four then. Mm -hmm. Is it now 1200? Today. In today's time, uh, must have mu multiplied? 11.4 <laughs> billion. From four to 11.4 billion. That's the marvel of technology. That's the miniaturization of computing power. And as you can miniaturize computing power, that chip now gets on to the smallest drone and the most powerful hypersonic missile. It gets into your phone, the toaster and a satellite. Miniaturization of computing power. Now that's an oversimplification. There is a lot more to it. And that is why it is so critical. You know, when we say it shaped the outcome of this, that and the other. And this whole miniaturizing game you know, much of current, recent and future geopolitics is about the Olympiad of the semiconductor. It's a race. How fast can you miniaturize? How sophisticated is your miniaturization? And so on and so forth. And that is why the battle for supremacy of chips is so important. I gave you the example of the toaster and the hypersonic missile. So it is determining our economic prosperity. It is also shaping our military superiority. Silicon chips have, you know, come to define our world. And just let me give you these two, three data points. They define our world because of the salience of technology. See how they are impacting business. And look at the enormity of the supply chain statecraft all around that chip. Advanced chips, as I said, are constructed from the smallest electronic components that are being manufactured. Mm -hmm. That whole game to support an industry that is gargantuan in scale. Everything today without chips, there is nothing. Right. Look at the calibrated supply chain statecraft. I am told this small chip from sand to finished product, it starts from sand before it becomes a finishing product in that missile or the toaster or that television or the satellite. 
the supply chain process goes through 76 countries, which means if you have to master the chip, you don't not only have to miniaturize it, so all kinds of sophisticated technologies. This is the statecraft, international relations. Mm -hmm. It is not possible to do everything. So whole, the whole game is to be in control of the value addition dimensions of that supply chain. Which means you'll have to have supply chain state craft, not the science. In terms of how you do business with nations, whom do you befriend, what alliances you make, what partnerships you make. And they have come to define, they serve the richest, most powerful, valuable companies. There is no company which can do without a chip today. True. So economic prosperity, military superiority, and in within all that, these nuances are there. Now look at the Olympiad. You have the sharpest technology with an eye into the distant future, supply chain statecraft. Very fine sense of business. How do you link it with the best business companies? Mm -hmm. You know, commerce, it's just, uh, this is the complexity associated with the chip. And as I said, it is also the lifeline of modern combat. If the Russians are back in business today in terms of air power and those drones, it is because of Chinese chips. The Russian air power, which was absent, is suddenly in back in business. dumb munitions they have been made precise because of the chip. Iranians, those Shahzad drones, they are doing wonders. But do you think they could have done anything without the Chinese chip? Iran ke pass the chip hai So Iranians get the chip. They shape Ukraine, they use the data there to improve their drones. Look what they do on the 14th of April. Would it have been possible without the ship? So they are the lifeline of modern combat. You have just heard a glimpse of the conversation. The full story? It's waiting for you in the complete episode of DOAP. If you're eager to explore the forces shaping our world, make sure to subscribe. We're just scratching the surface and the next conversation might just change how you see the world.